Alpha Brain, perhaps the most well-marketed and popular nootropic in the world. Endorsed by Joe Rogan, the manufacturer on it says that it improves memory and executive function. But what does the evidence say? Today, I'll tell you about some of the ingredients of Alpha Brain and the results of two blinded, randomized control trials and... I'll take a bottle myself and tell you my own results and side effects, and I'll measure my cognitive function by playing chess and see if I can improve my chess.com blitz rating. Let's go ahead and get started. Remember what Mark Twain said, what's the difference between man and the animals? The desire to take pills. Let's have some fun. So these are the ingredients of Alpha Brain. All of these substances have previously been purported to improve cognitive function. There's nothing truly new here. This is just a proprietary blend of different nootropics. A few potential risks here. This does contain B6 or pyridoxine, which at very high doses over long periods of time does have a toxicity syndrome and can cause peripheral neuropathy. Occasionally I see patients who have vitamin B6 related peripheral neuropathy, particularly if they're taking multiple formulations containing this vitamin, like if you take alpha brain plus a multivitamin or plus a B complex vitamin. So caution there. This also does contain hooperzine A, which is an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor, similar to pharmaceuticals such as Dinepazo used to treat Alzheimer's disease or Mestinon used to treat myasthenia gravis, which does have some medical contraindications such as heart block. So talk to your own provider for medical advice. Let's take a look at just a few of the compounds in this formulation. One ingredient is the herb Bacopa monieri, which is popular in Ayurvedic medicine used to treat asthma and epilepsy. It's also been used in ADHD and it contains a lot of compounds including alkaloids, saponins, and flavonoids. In animal studies, it's been shown to have procholinergic effects. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter implicated in cognitive function. For example, loss of neurons in the nucleus based salus of Minert that use the neurotransmitter acetylcholine has been associated with cognitive decline. It also has antioxidant activity in various parts of the rat brain. It's thought that increased utilization of acetylcholine could be the mechanism of action of Bacopa monieri, and it's recommended to take it with a source of choline, which Alpha Brain also contains. There have been various studies in humans. For example, this Australian randomized double-blind control trial in 81 healthy individuals greater than age 55, but without dementia. They used a higher dose than what's in Alpha Brain. They used 300 milligrams a day. Alpha Brain contains only 100 milligrams a day, but they were able to demonstrate statistically significant effects on various cognitive tests, as shown in the column on the right. Another ingredient of alpha brain is Huperzia serrata, which is a firm moss known to contain the compound Huperzine A, which is an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. Acetylcholinesterase is an enzyme that normally degrades acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft, so you get more of acetylcholine, again a neurotransmitter known to have effects on cognitive function. Huperzine A also has effects on NMDA and methyl deaspartate, which is similar to the mechanism of action of the Alzheimer's drug memantine. It's also used in traditional Chinese medicine for fever and swelling, and you can see what it looks like molecularly here. There are various studies in humans. For example, this is a randomized controlled trial in people with mild to moderate Alzheimer's disease using 0.4 milligrams twice daily versus placebo, and you can see there was a statistically significant difference in the Alzheimer's disease assessment cognitive subscore by week 11 but by week 16 it was no longer statistically significant with a p-value of 0.07. Now we move to the meat of the video which is the clinical trial that on it claims proves that alpha brain is effective and I'll show you the methodology. They screened a total of 118 people but only 70 actually got into the study and then 7 dropped out leaving 30 randomized to getting alpha brain versus 33 getting placebo. Here are the inclusion criteria. You could see you had to be between age 18 and 35 and you had to have a mini mental status exam score greater or equal to 28 out of 30, in other words, normal cognitive function, and no diagnosis of ADHD, depression, learning disabilities, concussion with loss of consciousness, and no psychoactive medications or nootropics in the last six months, and no dependence on illicit drugs. They studied an interesting paraclinical marker called the EEG, or electroencephalogram. It turns out a certain rhythm, the alpha rhythm, does correlate somewhat with cognitive function. 
Alpha is the rhythm that's present in an awake individual with their eyes closed in the occipital lobes, and you can see a normal frequency of 8 to 12 hertz. And you can see that people with alpha brain had a slightly higher peak alpha frequency. It's known that people with dementia have an average lower alpha frequency, usually around 7 to 8 hertz. They also looked at the theta to beta ratio. Theta is the rhythm seen in drowsiness and sleepiness, and you can see people taking alpha brain had less sleepiness shown by theta activity. This has been demonstrated with various other substances such as caffeine which also suppressed theta in this study. Now in this study they did a bunch of different cognitive tests and I won't show you all of them but let's focus on a few that actually showed statistically significant different results. One is the California verbal learning test which is a measure of short-term memory and so they read you a series of words and you have to recall them at a later time and in the study there was an improvement with alpha brain compared to placebo. Now the way they did the study is they did a 15-day run-in where everyone got placebo for the first two weeks and then they did the study for 30 days so we're really comparing comparing day 45 to day 15 because by day 15 no one had actually gotten alpha brain and you can see the alpha brain group improved in the long delay California verbal learning test whereas the placebo group did not significantly improve. The other test where there was a difference was something called color word inhibition. Now there are various ways this test is done. I'm not exactly sure which version they did, but it's thought to be a test of executive function. For example, first the examiner would ask you to read the words. So you would say blue, green, green, red, yellow, red. Then they would ask you to ignore the word and read only the color. For instance, blue, red, green, yellow, green, green. And you can see it's a little bit difficult. You have to choose to ignore certain information. So let's take a look at all of the results of the study. These are the 16 different cognitive batteries done. And interestingly, even during the baseline period, while everyone was still taking placebo, on three of the 16 tests, those who were randomized to alpha brain did a little bit better. I'm not sure why this happened, maybe just random chance, and it shouldn't affect the study overall. The two blue arrows point to the two cognitive tests where alpha brain actually had a statistically significant improvement compared to placebo. One was the long delay short term memory test, and the other was the color word inhibition, supposedly measuring executive function. Now, if you think about it, two out of 16 positive results isn't all that impressive and could easily occur by random chance. In a typical randomized controlled trial, there's a pre-specified primary endpoint, and a reasonable endpoint for this type of study would be a composite endpoint, looking at a totality of all of the cognitive tests together and seeing that there was a statistically significant improvement compared to placebo. That being said, for a small pilot study, it's okay, but it's very, very preliminary evidence, definitely not definitive, and really not that impressive overall, in my opinion. Now, let's take a look at the results in a different way. I don't have access to the raw data, but the authors were so kind as to include the performance of each group in z-score, or in other words, standard deviations relative to the mean. And I summarized the data here and color-coded it. And so you can see for each test, the performance of both the alpha brain and placebo group in the final test relative to their baseline exam. Did they improve or did they get worse? Now for 12 out of 16 of these tests, color-coded in green, the alpha brain group had more improvement relative to the placebo group. But the placebo group actually did better than alpha brain relative to their baseline score in four out of the 16 tests. Overall, the placebo group actually did worse somehow, which is unusual. Usually even the placebo gets better in cognitive tests just because they're more familiar with the test and likely to perform better later on. And they got worse by a total of 3.8 standard deviations or an average of 0.2375 standard deviations worse on the follow-up exam. However, the alpha brain group did better by a total of 1.65 standard deviations or an average per test of only 0.103 standard deviations. A couple things to take away from this. One is that in some of the tests, alpha brain outperformed placebo, but they didn't really get better. For example, in the long short-term memory test, alpha brain group got better by 0.48 standard deviations, so that was impressive. However, in the other statistically significant result, the color word test I showed you, the alpha brain did better than placebo, but they didn't really do better. They actually got slightly worse after taking alpha brain by only 0.01 standard deviations, which is marginal, but still, it's absurd 
absurd to claim that Alpha Brain improved executive function where people actually taking it did worse. It's just that the placebo group did even more worse. Again, this is an absurd and ludicrous claim. Another thing to keep in mind here is the size of the effect. On average for these tests, the effect size was only 0.1 standard deviations, 0.103 standard deviations. Now let's think in terms of percentile scores. Let's say I'm a 50th percentile performer in cognitive function, and let's say I take something that causes my cognitive function to improve by a full standard deviation. I go from 50th percentile to 68th percentile. A modest change, but perhaps that would be noticeable. A 0.1 standard deviation increase would only increase your performance from 50th percentile to 54th percentile. Very, very marginal, highly unlikely you would notice such a difference. So the idea that you're going to take alpha brain and notice some massive increase is completely absurd and anytime someone reports that it's likely due to the placebo effect. Let's be serious. In the same study they also looked at quality of sleep and there was no difference between treatment and placebo whatsoever. By the way this study was done by the Boston Center for Memory which provides clinical care for people with memory disorders and participates in various clinical trials and I'm not accusing them of any kind of fraud or misdeeds. Of course the abstract of the study does tend to make the drug look better than it actually is in my opinion but what else do you expect from a proprietary product. And of course, the company on it that makes Alpha Brain sponsored both of these trials, but they didn't perform the studies or influence the data or control the publication to my knowledge. Now, this second study was actually a marksmanship study, not a cognitive function study in the U.S. military. They had 48 U.S. active duty soldiers, 35 males, 12 females, and they studied them over 30 days taking Alpha Brain before and after and tested their marksmanship with an M4 rifle. And there was improvement in accuracy before and after, which makes sense. People get better with practice, but there was no difference between alpha brain and placebo. They looked at some other things like distance from the center of the mass, no differences along with reaction time, and they even looked at mood scales, but there was no difference whatsoever, so this was a negative study. And now on to my own personal experience with alpha brain taking one bottle. Now it's two tablets per dose, and there are only 30 tablets, so I only took it for 15 days. And first I'll start with the side effects. Now some people can experience some un pleasant side effects like gastrointestinal symptoms. I didn't experience any untoward side effects. I did experience vivid dreams, which has been reported to be a side effect. And normally I have a vivid dream very rarely, maybe once every six months, but I actually had three in a 15 day period, which is a lot. I'm not sure if it was just because I was paying closer attention to them, but it definitely seemed to be a real difference. And I'll tell you what they were. So vivid dream number one, I was trapped in a giant maze. There were these huge rooms and there were tunnels connecting the different rooms. Apparently this maze was constructed by one of my professional colleagues, although I don't know what the backstory was or how I knew that. And so I'd get from room to room going through these tunnels and they were like cloth tunnels and they were getting narrower and narrower and it was very claustrophobic and then I got into the next room and I was sort of going from room to room trying to get out. And at one point I got into a room and there was a family there with kids and they apparently got trapped within the maze and couldn't get out and then the dream ended. I don't know what the backstory was there. Vivid dream number two. So I normally make videos about multiple sclerosis and in the dream a prominent YouTube creator who's very famous made a comment on one of my videos and I ended up interacting with them online and they mentioned to me in private that they had multiple sclerosis and they followed a plant-based diet and had very good results. So I ended up meeting this person in person at a restaurant and I was talking to them and I wanted to do an interview but they refused the interview and they said they were too private and in fact this particular person did not show their face as a content creator. And I remember saying something to them like, how could you be so famous and not even show your face? And I just remember in the restaurant, other people were looking at us trying to figure out who this person was, and then the dream ended. Vivid dream number three. So I was in a large building with my family. It was kind of like an office building, and we were being held hostage by a bunch of gunmen, and there were a lot of other hostages there. It was a big crowd. And the gunmen, they weren't harassing us or doing anything to us, and they were sort of guarding the front door, but there were a lot of other exits from the lobby, and there was a huge crowd, 
and so I was able to sort of slip out the back and escape into the building and I was looking for a place in the building to escape alone without my family and I found a ledge where potentially I could jump off onto the street and so I went back to my family but because the gunmen were right there I couldn't communicate anything to my wife and I guess I sort of judged that I couldn't take my whole family we would be noticed so I grabbed one of my children and sort of again snuck out the back and took my child to this ledge and we sort of sat there over the edge and then I grabbed my child and jumped off onto a grassy area and I signaled to my child to be quiet and then we kind of escaped and went across the street and we ended up in someone's private home and we went into their backyard and I was sort of knocking on a glass door trying to say SOS let us in but they wouldn't let us in they were scared and so I opened up my phone and I called the police and then I turned it on speakerphone and I was sort of looking on Google Maps trying to find the name of the office building to direct the police to the right location and then the dream ended. So if there are any experts in dream interpretation, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. The feeling of these vivid dreams wasn't pleasant or unpleasant. It was just interesting. It didn't disturb my sleep in any way. It was definitely a distinctive and very vivid dream that I don't typically have very often. So now what about my cognitive results? Did taking alpha brain cause any noticeable difference in cognitive function? I have to say, no, I didn't notice anything at all whatsoever. No difference, positive or negative. It was exactly the same before, after, and during. I also tried playing chess daily and tried to see if I could improve my blitz rating on chess.com. At the beginning, my rating was 1587. At the end, it was 1572. A slight decline, but really just random variation. So I didn't notice anything different whatsoever. But I'd be interested to know, have you taken Alpha Brain? If so, what are your results? Did you have any side effects or vivid dreams? Or have you tried other nootropics? And do you have any suggestions for future videos?